Okay, so we've talked about addition story problems and how we write them. Um, so let's talk about subtraction story problems and how we write those. I, again, have come up with a little, we call this thing a frame for writing subtraction story problems so that they're a little bit easier. You don't have to use it, especially if you want to write about some, uh, write your story problems in a different way or write about not a person, right? Write about animals at the zoo or write about seats on a bus. But if you want to write about a person, subtract, um, get it, losing things with subtraction, this might help you might make the first couple easier and then you can do it without, right? For subtraction, our, our sentence frame looks like this, right? Someone has number of things, he or she, what happened, number of them. How many things does she or he have left? Now, it looks, it's the same as the addition one pretty much, except when we're adding, we're always getting something, right? Or making something, but we can use that word get for what happened almost every time we write. If we want to switch it up, we can, but we use that word get a lot. With subtraction, there are a lot of things that can happen to make us lose things, right? They can get lost. They can get broken. They can be thrown away. They can fly away. They can get eaten. All kinds of things. They could change. We could read them. There are a whole bunch of different things that can happen with subtraction. So we have to figure out this what happened piece. What happened to whatever it is that makes it not available to us anymore. So that's, that's one extra piece to the subtraction. Now I have a number sentence here that I pulled out of my little bag of subtraction number sentences. You can use this, you can use numbers you actually have, or you can write about things in your actual house. Maybe you have cookies in on a pan and you're, you're writing a story about how they get eaten, right? Or maybe you, uh, you have stuffed animals and you've lost some or you've broken something. You can write about things in your own house too. That might be easy to write about because you can see it. Um, instead of making it up. I like to write about the Letterland friends because we know a lot about them. And we know what they like. And that makes them easy to kind of think of things about. All right, so I think, let's see, someone. I think I'm going to write my story problem this time about Bouncy Ben. So let's see, Bouncy Ben. Bouncy Ben is my someone. Bouncy Ben has number. My first number here is seven. Bouncy Ben has seven things. Balloons. Something that Bouncy Ben would have seven of. Period. Bouncy Ben has seven balloons. Okay. He, Bouncy Ben is a boy, so I'm going to write he. He, what happens? What happens to his balloons? Do they pop? Do they fly away? Do they, I think they pop. He pops, how many of them? Five. He pops five of them. Okay, period. Second sentence. Bouncy Ben has seven balloons. He pops five of them. How many right? How many things? What does Bouncy Ben have? Balloons, right? How many balloons does He have, now this is the subtraction word, right? Left. Question mark at the end of our story problems, right? Because we're asking this question. How many balloons does he have left? Now I can write my number sentence. Seven take away. Five equals, okay, now 
now I get to draw my picture. Bouncy Ben has seven balloons. He pops five of them. Okay, let's draw Bouncy Ben on here. I don't know how that's going to go, but we're going to do our best, right? That's our number one rule. Try our best. It doesn't matter if it looks perfect. It doesn't matter if it looks like Bouncy Ben. All that matters is that we try our best. Okay, let's try his little B. Make it a little bit darker. I can't. Uh oh. It's not going well already. Okay, and around. Bouncy Ben. Okay, now I need a brown. Luckily, he has too many crayons. Okay. For his, his face peeks out in here, right? Here's his face. Go ahead and color it in. And then his ears stick up above his letter shape. And he's got a second one. Okay. Bouncy Ben. I gotta get him um, some eyeballs. And you can see these balloons. And maybe a little pink nose. There's Bouncy Ben. He has seven balloons. Okay, so let's draw his seven balloons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Let's make them red and orange. One balloon. Two balloons. Uh -oh. That one doesn't really connect to its string. Three balloons. Four balloons. Five balloons. Six balloons. Seven balloons. Okay, there's Bouncy Ben's balloons, right? He has seven of them. Now, some of them need to pop, right? Five of them need to pop. So remember, we've talked about this a little bit. When we do subtraction pictures, we don't erase things. I can't erase anymore because I've drawn in crayon. So instead of erasing, I'm going to cross them out, the ones that pop. I think I'm going to just use my pencil. I could also, if they had flown away, I could draw an arrow like right? Like what I did with the last one, draw an arrow and have them flying away. But I still want to cross them out so that I know that they're not there anymore. So we have five of them pop. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, Bouncy Ben has seven balloons. Five of them pop. How many does he have left? Two, right? He has two balloons left. Does this make sense? So try on your own. Try to write your own subtraction story problem. Send me a picture of your story problem when you're done or a video of you reading your story problem. And I will put them on the website so that everybody has a chance to, to solve your story problem. 
Good luck. Can't wait to see what you come up with.